So then this is only a very short one actually, with our lovely selection of uh, life of the gas respirators there, all Mark 6s. We've got uh, the Mark 6 which was also later repaired and uh, using a uh, yeah, darker green head harness that you can't actually properly see. We've got a large Mark 6 using, using the uh, Mark 3 lightweight canister which is safe, it's asbestos free. And the nuclear lag, this one being 1052. And then also we've got these. I only want to briefly cover them because I haven't got a lot of daylight left. So let's shift this on over. Shift you all on over. We've got our lovely little ordinary satchel here. This is the um, this is not the original satchel it would have gone to because these are both Danish reissue. They do have some uh, text and such on the back here, not that it matters. But yes, because as we know, the Danes actually bought a lot of lags. They didn't just buy the Mark II away, that just so happens to be the most common variant. Um, and also, as it happens, large isn't actually the largest Mark VI size. As it turns out, the Mark VI and the Mark VII, as Brock for days recently found out, has an extra large and extra small. If you happen to own an extra large or know someone who has one, please get in contact with me immediately. Because that's, that's not great for me. But regardless, I'll pop this open. I can't remember which bag it is. Ah, good. This is the Mark II. Uh, an actual Mark II, as it happens. I might turn the light on in a moment. This isn't, um, of course, the Mark II in the uh, Weapons and Stuff 93 assumption days. No, this is a real Mark II. Got the flashlight this time, so... This is the Mark II, as I say, size normal, and of course we've got our CF stamp here, the Danish reissue stamp. And it happens to be missing the manufacturer's stamp, which is something Brock for days also noted. This is in remarkable condition. And like, well-stored lags happen to smell like burning rubber, like an old bonfire. Now you may notice that the valve holder is very different to the Mark IIA, it has a sort of a nipple in the middle. Of course, wildly different to the Mark VI, but regardless. Um, it's one of the ways you'd be able to tell the difference between a Mark II. I say this is the Canadian one, which is less valuable, but still very cool, because it is essentially the same model. The straps are in very remarkable condition. You hear that twanging? It's got the uh, my favourite head harness style, which I vastly prefer over this shit, where it's all sewn on. Also, do note that this has a tag that says World War II gas mask, despite clearly saying 1952, but whatever. Now, um, I can't remember if this had size larges or not. I'll uh, yeah, pin it if it does. Interesting patterns along here where they look scuffed, like it's been burned on, but that's on all of them. If I pop this through here... Come on, go over the front. Go over the front, you bastard. You can see there, it says it uses the L2 face piece. Some varying text in there. All this. Valve's in better condition than any C3 I've ever gotten. As I say, size normal. This is just quite interesting, you've got your cloth tape on there. I do love seeing these older designs compared to, say, the um, Mark IIA. And if we have, there's nothing else in the carrier. Um, this filter actually hasn't been uh, tainted by the Danish reissue stamp. And is technically just as bad as original as it can get. It's also got the darker cardboard on it. Uh, GD type 26, it's from... Uh, GD type 26? 1953 is the whole point, or no, hang on, 24th of October 1950. And I guess it would expire in 1953. Not sure. But again, the whole point is that it hasn't been tainted by Danish. And we move straight on from the Mark II, which also is safe, if I remember correctly. It's the Mark I that isn't safe. But uh, if you happen to have one of those, quite frankly, stop breathing through it and sell it to Baroque for days. I might be getting a PBF off him, actually, soon. Uh, to note, inside the bag as well, it does seem to have some spare straps. I'm not entirely sure why. It just did. In the bottom as well, in the carrier, we can see where um, things would have gone. Like your anti-fog tins, smears, cloth, what have you. The way you're meant to store this is actually you're meant to have a cardboard plug in the filter. I can't remember if it's on the inside or what, similar to the, um, the C3 thing which I already covered. And um, 
the way you'd store it was a horrendous, which is why a lot of them are misshapen now, because you'd put them in the bag and you'd fold the filter over like that. So, but uh, I don't need to do that because this filter was never issued. So I can just pop that in there. Oh, and also this in the back, which I, if I remember correctly, was for the eye shields. Since this is actually a Danish uh, reissue, I can finally use those fucking manuals I have. Oh, and the side pockets, of course. Where there would be hooks here, or sort of hooks, like webbing attachments, where you could put them on your webbing. Flop this over. And this is the more interesting one, it must be said. Um, oh yeah, to note as well. The CF stamp is on the inside of the lid, that one's black, this one's blue. Not sure why. The Mark II is Nick's. The Mark I uh, was mine, but Nick paid me for it after he bought, bought the Mark II. So, this was mine for about a day. I don't know about these stains, rust or blood, you decide. You can't even see it on camera, doesn't matter. It's been repaired there. So this is the Mark I. The actual Mark I. Not the Mark IIa. Yeah. Once again. I hate slandering him off, but he, you know... That was a big assumption to make. Um, this filter has been... Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, this is the actual Mark 1, not the Mark 2A, uh, that he called a Mark 1. Um, this one has been tainted by the CF stamp, and this has the brighter, rougher cardboard. Stamping here, GD. 24th of March 1955, light mark weight, uh, lightweight Mark 2. This big old stamp here. It's just generally interesting. I keep stumbling on my words. It's a very matte, rough feel. Once again, if I recall correctly, safe. And yes, this is the Mark I. The, uh, the OG. The original design. This isn't like the Mark I-A. Here made by VMC. I forget who that is. Once again, it'll be, you know, pinned. Uh, best head harness design, which... Also, we can see there, number four, Mark III. 1943. Oh, yes, I should have talked about the date on the Mark II. Let me find that. You don't have to see this. See there, 1943, I think. And GSW. Copyright back in there. If you'll fucking please. I'm not actually hitting it hard. If I did, it would have gone straight in. Um, beating up Nick's stuff. The standard 60 millimeter. Not all 60 millimeter masks are standard. The uh, M1. The Yugo M1. No one seems to talk about this. It's a uh, ghost, and I intend to prove it at some point when I can't fucking bothered. I really can't. Um, VMC. Which, oh, I've lost power. That's not good. I plugged in the to uh, plugged in the battery pack, and it immediately boosted back up to 26%. So I guess it's just really cold out here. But, um, go back onto this. See right there on the valve holder. It says 1943, and it's also got the triangle nose. I think it was Viceroy or something like that, VMC, I forget. Like I say, best head harness. Maker stamp is on the other side compared to the Mark II. Once again, smells like burning rubber, like an old shoe or a house fire or... Very good whiskey, I suppose. Hundred year old. <laughs> um, I'm a whiskey drinker myself, so I'm only going off what I heard. So I fold this over the front, please, without ripping anything. So I've got to do it a little bit more carefully than usual. See there, it uses the L3 slash C face piece. A bit of black paint on the inside of this one here. See there's some text there. One thing I noticed about these is that they don't have um, date stamps around the inner eye lenses, like the... Uh, Mark 6s do. Oh, this has a little tear there. What a shame. It's got caught in something. Um, so yeah, L3 slash C. That cut abruptly off because I'm also running out of storage space. I uh, took like 1,300 photos on my recent trip away. So yes, that's the Mark 1. The Canadian Mark 1. Just felt like going over it. Like I say, Danish reissue as well. And it's inter interesting to see. I wish I had a Mark 7 here for comparison to see how far it would come from, like, 1943. Uh, the, the lag would have been saved, in my opinion, if they'd kept... I just noticed that this is looped over, and then this one sticks straight up. How odd. 
Um, it would have been at least a saving grace to have kept the Tissot tube design, not you know, primitive as it was, that was on the Mark V. But you got these, which stuck around into the 70s, the uh, nuclear variant of the Mark VI, with its uh, worse strap design, if you ask me. The, where is it, the Mark II? That's the Mark II, and this is the Mark III. Interesting, went backwards. Whatever, probably just reused the parts. Anyway, if I pop you back in. Fuck off. Sorry, talk to the car. Anyway. Uh, lag Mark One and Lag Mark Two. Didn't think they were worth their own um their own, you know, dedicated videos themselves. So just cover them both at once with a bunch of other lags. Behold my stuff. Most of which is not mine. Only these two.